and let us all that we can to build a better future. So Jimmy Dore was right. Again, correct, again. About force to vote. Now, why am I talking about force to vote? Well, force to vote was uh, a, a time in 2021 in which Jimmy Dore and countless other progressive activists, organizers, independent journalists uh, from all over uh, were coming together to ask the squad. We asked AOC and 15 other congressional uh, progressive lawmakers to form a strong coalition to withhold their vote for Nancy Pelosi so that we can get a vote for Medicare for all on the House floor. Now, obviously, right off the bat, uh, would it have succeeded? Uh, probably not because we got heartless sociopathic politicians, but it would have shined a spotlight on these incredibly inhumane lawmakers who have gold-plated health care and should it would inspire Americans to turn out to vote, especially for the midterm election cycle, so that we can get progressive lawmakers who will actually fight for Medicare for all. Now, force to vote is an is, is a uh, theory, uh, not theory, it is an action that the DSA even promoted. Now, we've seen force to vote work successfully well, most notably when the Republicans were trying to get a Speaker of the House. And Matt Gates got what he wanted. You see, what we wanted to do was hold the Democrats accountable for their incompetence, but also for a fact, challenge the leadership, which the squad never did. But it turns out House Democrats are seeking to force the vote. This video came out on Valentine's Day, so shout out to Case Study QB. Please be sure to follow him on Twitter. That's right. And just so you all can see it firsthand, they are going to, Democrats, House Dems, seek to force a vote on Senate foreign aid bill to give billions to Israel, Ukraine, and other foreign countries. So in other words, folks, we got money for war. No money for health care. No money for social programs or schools or infrastructure. We get nothing. You will get nothing and like it. Here, let's listen to it firsthand. And so that's that's going from the House to the Senate. Let's talk about this $95 billion foreign aid package that's going from the Senate to the House. The Senate passing that yesterday, setting up what is the showdown in the House. There is some talk that Democrats may try to maneuver around that using different procedures that are frankly kind of difficult to do. It's hard to thread that needle. Help everyone understand how that would work, what that might look like. Yeah, Jessica, difficult is an understatement when you talk about these procedural maneuvers to try to force a vote on this $95 billion foreign aid package. The reason why we're talking about these procedural gambits is because Speaker Johnson uh, very strongly suggested that he does not plan to bring this foreign aid package to the House floor, putting out a statement uh, just before the vote uh, on Monday, essentially saying that because it excludes border security policy, it's a non-starter in the House. So now we're hearing some increased chatter about what's called a discharge petition, which again is that procedural maneuver that can circumvent leadership and force a vote on legislation. Whoa, wait, what's that? What's that? What's that? Say again, say again, say again. So now we're hearing some increased chatter about what's called a discharge petition, which again is that procedural maneuver that can circumvent leadership and force a vote on legislation. Force a vote? But gee, according to AOC, that's violent. I won't bore you with the nitty gritty details, <laughs> but essentially what you need here is a majority of the chamber to support this effort to force a vote on the House floor. Now, Democrats from the debt limit showdown last year already have what's called a ripe discharge petition. It means that it has gone through all of the procedural hurdles and the time uh, restraints, and it's ready to go. That has 213 signatures. Of course, you need 218 to be able to force a vote on the floor. So, Oh, so see, they, they got they got to force the vote. They they got to force the vote in order in order for this to happen. I, I was told that forced to vote was a bad idea. That's that's a tactic that doesn't work. I was told we got to keep our powder dry. That we can't that we can't be shaking things up. I remember how a lot of Democratic lawmakers were saying that this forced to vote that the Republicans are doing, all it is, all what Matt Gates is doing is just making everything terrible. House Democrats. Are you being hypocrites? That's five Republicans right there that are needed to sign on, though it'll likely uh, decrease to four with Tom Swazi coming to Washington and likely signing his name on the petition. A wrinkle in this process, though, is that a number of progressive lawmakers are expected to actually remove their name from that petition, uh, despite previously signing it uh, in protest of including is. Whoa, hold on. Progressive lawmakers 
removing their names after previously signing it. What? Let's listen to that one more time. Oh, is that a number of progressive lawmakers are expected to actually remove their name from that petition uh, despite previously signing it. Uh, it uh, what was that? One more time. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I think... I, did I hear progressive lawmakers? Sometimes, sometimes I get senile. Washington and likely signing his name on the petition. A wrinkle in this process, though, is that a number of progressive lawmakers are expected to actually remove their name from that petition, uh, despite previously signing it uh, in protest of including Israel aid in the supplemental without any conditions. Some progressives raising concerns, humanitarian concerns about individuals in the Gaza Strip. Uh, so it's right now an open question of how many Republicans would be needed to sign on. And Jessica, you know this, any number of Republicans sign on, even if a small number would be an extreme uphill battle because signing a discharge petition when you're in the majority is kind of like the nuclear option. It is a major, major, major rebuke of leadership. No doubt about it. We will keep our eye on that. Michael Schnell of The Hill. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Oh, yeah. But hold on. We got this from the post millennial. AOC will not sign petition to for, uh, force House vote on foreign funding bill. So what's going on here? House Democrats have been attempting to jump support for a discharge petition. By the way, discharge petition sounds so, sounds a little vulgar there, but OK, whatever. That would allow them to bypass Speaker Mike Johnson and force a vote on a 95 billion foreign aid package recently passed by the Senate. However, their efforts have been hindered by progressive members of their own party who have said that they will not sign on due to the funding uh, funding the bill provides to Israel. Johnson has really stated that he will not allow a vote to take place, making the discharge petition Democrats last hope of passing the bill, which provides financial assistance to Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel. So Democrats can fund our schools, can't help us with our infrastructure, won't give us Medicare for all, won't do all these wonderful things, but we got money for war. So according to uh, Semaphore, among those who cited among uh, cited funding for the Jewish state in its war against Iran-backed Palestinian terrorist organization Hamas, as they reason they weren't adding their name to the discharge petition was because of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Am I signing it? No, she told the outlet. In order to successfully force a vote in the House, the petition requires 218 signatures, meaning Democrats would need to somehow convince a number of their Republican colleagues to switch sides. All options are on the table. We're going to utilize every available legislative tool, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries said. Johnson has remained steadfast in his and most of his party's belief that no bill that doesn't include solving the crisis at the southern border should be considered by the House. The Republican-led uh, House will not be jammed or forced into passing a foreign aid bill that was opposed by most Republican senators and does, not, and does nothing to secure our own border, uh, he said on Wednesday. It's time for Washington to start showing some love for Americans. On Valentine's Day, it's a good day to point this out, he continued. We need to listen to the American people and their needs and take action. And that's why House leadership will continue to govern with Americans' interests at heart. Aw. That's in that low load of bull. Isn't that a load of bull right there? So House Democrats face tough odds of forcing foreign aid vote. So force the vote. Force the vote indeed. So let's talk about House Democrats appear far short of their support. They need uh, to bypass Speaker Mike Johnson and force a vote on the Senate's bill to aid Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Why it matters, even centrist Republicans who are staunchly supportive of the Ukraine aid in the, uh, in the bill are hesitant to break with their leadership. My first step is to work with the speaker and go from there, said Representative Don Bacon. No relation to the bacon industry. We've got uh, John Durrett, uh, who's who represents the district. Uh, President Biden won in 2020, told Axios he is very reserved of undermining the speaker. House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries said Democrats will use every available legislative tool to bring the bill to the floor. One of those tools is a discharge petition. Ugh. Which signed, uh, which if signed by 218 House members, can circumvent majority leadership and force bills to a vote. So AOC, I mean, it does work. Now, now this is a force to vote that you know I, I'm I'm not a big fan of. More money for war, great. Asked about the petition, uh, discharge petition on Tuesday, Jeffrey told reporters all options are on the table. Modern partisanship places immense pressure on lawmakers not to break with party leadership and hand control of the floor to the other side. So far, not a single House Republican has said that they would join the discharge petition. Johnson told reporters on Tuesday he certainly poses a discharge petition and hopes that would not uh, would not be considered. So Democrats acknowledge the maneuver require at least a handful of Republican signatures and likely more given progressive opposition aid uh, to Israel, but we're skeptical. So there we go. 
There we go. So here we have all these wonderful lawmakers adding in their two cents. So for those of you who might have forgotten, just just why why am I keep on bringing force to vote? Why am I bringing this up? Because force to vote was a moment. It was a great revelation, the great reveal of overall how heartless our lawmakers are. And really, it, it, it revealed that our politicians, especially people like AOC, were never, ever going to follow through with their promises to help us. Case in point, shout out to Matt Orfala. This video is aged like fine wine. Aged like fine wine and shall forever be remembered as pure gold. It's outstanding. We can't even get a floor vote on Medicare for all. That's garbage. You can do it right <laughs> now. We need 15 Democrats. Hi, Jimmy. We need the elected officials that you helped get elected to tell Nancy Pelosi that you will not vote for her as speaker unless Medicare for all is put on the House floor for a vote. I think it's a really smart idea. You know, the worst abuse of power, Crystal, is not using the power you have to fight mm. for people. Will they? Time to let AOC see no they have no other option because we're watching and we see through their bullshit excuses we have to put public pressure on them i want to see who's going to vote against health care in the middle of a pandemic if you're not going to do it now you are never going to do it you phony all the people who filled up your voicemail they're going to remember whether you did the right thing here which side are they really on this is where you force progressive house members to reveal who they answer to do they answer to their constituents or do they answer to the party bosses listen to aoc's own words and the democratic party does not do more unless it is pushed and so this moment is the great unmasking force it to happen ask them are you fighters or are you careerists are you activists for the people or are you posers on twitter everyone's gonna try to tell you that if you're just a little bit nicer then it'll be fine no the whole point of protesting is to make people uncomfortable you gotta make them uncomfortable she's pretending to be part of a movement when she's really running cover for nancy pelosi did you think anybody voted for you so you could vote nancy pelosi without getting them anything <laughs> This is Medicare for all. People's actual lives depend on us doing this. Yeah, exactly. Now it's your chance to actually use your leverage. Will you? Take risks. Or will you be a party fucking climber? Start bringing the ruckus on the Democratic Party. Force it to happen. Do not trust any political party to automatically work in your interest. I call on everybody in independent media to join this mission. Force it to happen. Force the Congress to show which side are they really on. No vote for Nancy Pelosi unless Medicare for all is put on the House floor for a vote. The Democratic Party does not do more unless it is pushed. So we need to push them. Man, great job, Matt. He goes by the name Orf. Wonderful job. This will call him Matt. Oh, I don't want butcher his name. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphalia. Matt Orphala. I got it right. It's one of my pet peeves is people don't get my name right. So what? What? What can we learn? What can we learn from all of this? Especially from that awesome video from way, way, way back in 2021. That force to vote can work. That it is an effective strategy, but it's only going to be used when it benefits the Democrats' donors or their own political standing with the lobby groups and other big money interests that support them while they are in office. It's all one big game. It's, 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 it's a game that we're all losing here, folks. But yet, when it was time for AOC and the squad to step up, they blinked. They backed down. Force the vote is an effective strategy. It it does work. Matt Gates proved it when the House de Republicans were uh, going through their votes, not once, but 15 times in a row. And I, I loved every single minute of it because it was pure gold. It was outstanding. I loved every minute of it because those politicians were uncomfortable. And it revealed that it, only if we had progressive lawmakers that had the courage to challenge their leadership. But see, that's not what Democrats are there for. They're there to be obedient robots, to comply with the system, to comply with the hierarchy. So in other words, whenever you hear anyone say that force of vote was a bad idea, just let them know that force of vote has been used. It's been used before. It's just it's only when it matters for the politicians' bottom line, their money, or either that those that support them and their money. 
Force to vote works, and Jimmy Dore was correct, as were all of us that fought for force to vote. Never forget what could have been done, what might have been, if we had lawmakers that actually have the heart and soul to truly fight.